Curved mirrors also follow the, um, the law of reflection. And so what we have here is we've got a, uh, a, a concave mirror. Right? So here is our concave mirror. And typically when we're drawing these um, light diagrams, um, there are a couple of things that we need to make note of. So first thing is we're going to have obviously our object. And our object, we typically use a, an arrow to show our object. So this is the, um, let's, uh, let's label this with some kind of color here. So this is our object and where it's positioned. This dot here that we see is referred to pretty much, we're going to label it as F. And this F represents... Right, this F represents a focal point. And in this focal point, it's pretty much where all the light rays are going to meet or where they're going to appear to meet. So they're all going to somehow cross through this area. Right? So when we're drawing, we've got also this flat line, right? This is referred to as our principal axis. Right. So this principal axis lies as pretty much the so-called invisible uh, floor in which our object, let's say, lies. Right. So in the middle, this point here in which the uh, principal axis will hit the actual mirror is referred to, draw this somehow, right? I'm going to label this, is referred to as our vertex. So a couple of really important points, right? This principal axis, right? Um, we've got our focal point, our object, as well as our vertex. So the principal axis is pretty much this imaginary line that we draw through the vertex pretty much to represent really the surface in which our object lies, right? And it makes its way towards this concave mirror. So we are going to draw two rays and I'm going to show them what using different colors. So we're going to draw our first ray and, and when we're drawing these ray diagrams, we always want to draw, oops, we always want to draw two different rays. And so the first one I'm going to draw here, I'm going to draw it in blue. This first ray is going to pretty much make its way through the object. Actually, sorry about that. Let me draw it from the object. So it's going to make its way from the object towards this concave mirror. And it's going to hit it parallel to this principal axis so it's this um ray of light is going to is going to go past the object hit the concave uh, mirror and then it's going to reflect using the law of um uh, the law of reflection and it's going to reflect through the focal point and i'm going to extend it even further and so that's pretty much the way the first ray will go. So it will hit the concave mirror perpendicular to the principal axis and cross through the focal point going in this direction. And again, if we were to measure the angle and form, um, and again, it might not look like that, but remember, we're assuming this is a curved surface. Right? So it's not going to appear the way it appeared when we're talking about a flat surface for the mirror. And then we're going to have a second ray. And I'm going to use um, a red line to show that. And this is going to go through the focal point and hit the concave mirror. Right? And it's going to go also in this direction. So. However, second ray, so the second ray, which we're using a red line, is going to go through the focal point, hit the concave mirror, and it is going to reflect in such that it too is perpendicular 
and try to make it as perpendicular as possible. to the principal axis, right? So it's going to go in this direction. So make note here, we've got our first ray. So ray one is gonna go perpendicular, or sorry, parallel with the principal axis and reflect through the focal point. Our second ray, right? Our second ray is going to go through the focal point and reflect uh, parallel to this principal axis, which is that main, that imaginary black line. And what happens is this point in which they appear to reflect, right? These are the, the reflecting rays now. These reflecting rays meet here. They are going to meet and they're going to form an object, or should I say an image, Right, so this object is going to appear over here with this grayed arrow that I'm pointing downwards because it's going, because remember, the base of this arrow is on the principal axis, which means the base of the image. Right, this is now the image that is actually being formed. And so, a few things to make note of when we have our object here and our focal point it lies between this object and the focal point, this image is going to be pretty much inverted, right? So it's going to form an inverted image. The image, because it appears on the same side of the object, is referred to as a real image. If I was to put a, uh, a screen here, I'd be able to capture that image on that screen. Right? So we've got an inverted image because it's almost upside down. Right? And the image is, um, right, so the image is going to appear here, but really how are we going to see this image, right? If you've ever gone to one of these fun houses and, and stood in front of these curved mirrors, Right, and all of a sudden you stand there and you almost see the image that you're you're creating, and it's it, it, the image is is inverted maybe, right? And so this is in which one of the uh, the ways that we we can actually pretty much create um, that kind of appearance when we're looking at these kind of mirrors. So a few other things to make note of um, in our diagram, and let me try to find a color that's gonna kind of I guess we'll be able to identify, right? So here we have pretty much. A label distance of the object so the do so how far is this object from the concave mirror and how far is the distance of the image right so we're kind of measuring really from you know imagining if it was like this and then of course it's sorry oops it's not through there it's actually through this vertex that image how far is that image from the vertex. How far is this object? Right? And we can use these to actually figure out uh, the magnification of these objects. Right? Other things, right? we can find out the height of the object and the height here of the image. And we'll see how these can play a role when, when doing mathematical calculations um, of, uh, of our objects. So, as I said, pretty much we've got a real image. Right? If I was able to place a screen, I would be able to, uh, to, to capture that image. If I was to, to move the screen a little bit, the image would appear a little bit blurred, right? because these reflected rays would actually not be converging uh, at this uh, screen location. Right? This is where we're going to get the best image. So, if we were to put our screen here, Right, we'd be able to capture that image. However, if we moved it from here, from where this image is, we're, our object's going to appear almost um, blurry. Right? 